Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be revisiting the idea of the ultimate solar system. A star system that has just the perfect amount of Earth-like planets placed in the habitable zone, making it for the highest number of habitable planets in the system. Anyway, let's explore this and welcome to What The Math. So here we are on the surface of one of basically 416 Earth-like planets that were placed in the Space Engine as a kind of a simulation of the uh, ultimate solar system that I created um, right here. And so if I were to actually turn around and look into the skies, I would see quite an unusual formation of what seems to be stars, but it's really other Earth-like planets. Now, the game is a little bit slow right now, and that's because there's just such a ridiculous number of these planets here. And I actually had to reduce the settings for my space engine just to even make them uh, appear without destroying my computer completely. Now, in the video tomorrow, I'm going to show you how I did this, and we're actually going to do a little bit of programming, and I'm going to teach you how to recreate this. But the cool thing about this particular design and this particular idea is that it's actually scientifically accurate and it's actually based on the paper and the article I, I described in one of the previous videos where we did this with Universe and Vox. But as you can imagine, it's a lot more difficult to do in Space Engine, but it also has a higher reward because it looks so much more stunning. Now here we have eight rings of Earth-like planets, all sort of separated from each other at a very specific distance of approximately 12 hill spheres. I'm going to explain this to you a little bit more tomorrow. We're going to do a little bit of more math, I guess. Each of these rings is actually uh, located and positioned in such a way where one of the rings goes this way, the other ring goes the opposite way, so that they actually don't disturb each other gravitationally. And uh, although there is actually sometimes a bug in Space Engine, which I think I'm experiencing right now, where they all seem to start orbiting in the same direction, even though I told them specifically not to do that. So that's actually a bug, that's not how they're supposed to be orbiting. But anyway, ignoring the bug for a second, they do actually have inclinations set to an amount where they should be orbiting the other direction. Let's talk a little bit more about how these planets are positioned. So, if I jump to the planet that's known as Ring Zero Earth 9, for the lack of better names, uh, that's right there. This planet is, uh, for all intents and purposes, is basically Earth. Now, it doesn't look like Earth because I actually randomized their appearance, but it's a mass of Earth, it's size of Earth, and it has Earth-like properties. But at the same time, it's also one of 416 similar planets. And the closest planet to it is actually right, right, right there, I think. No, right, oh, sorry, right here. And it's at a distance of... Um, approximately 9 million kilometers away from us, uh, which is about, I guess, 30 times the distance of Earth to the Moon. And so, uh, it's actually a very interesting arrangement. There's 52 planets per ring here, and they all orbit in a very sort of a balanced way. As a matter of fact, none of them disturb each other. Uh, the simulations that have been run with, for this kind of an arrangement indicated that you can have this stable arrangement of planets for up to a billion years with about 80% chance of survival, or maybe even 10 billion years with about a 40% chance of survival. So, I'm not saying that it's possible that this exists somewhere, but it's possible that this exists somewhere. You could actually have a system somewhere out there where you have this many planets in this unusual arrangement, and they all kind of are in the same region of space. Now, obviously the coolest part about all of this is that they are in the habitable zone. In other words, every one of them hypothetically could have liquid water on them. I didn't really include this for the reasons of wanting to have more procedurally generated planets, but 
I just wanted to let you know that it is definitely possible. As a matter of fact, if I jump into this, and this actually shows us all of the planets together at the same time, and zoom in to basically explore them, you'll see that quite a lot of them actually appear Earth-like. So this one here, uh, that one looks like Venus. Uh, this one has rings. This one has rings and looks like Earth. So does this one, and so does this one. So they're all sort of really well represented and also look absolutely stunning. This is why I wanted to do this procedurally because it's kind of fun to explore them. Now, obviously the problem here is that because there's so many of them, most computers, unless they're extremely powerful, will have trouble processing this. So if you do recreate this, and I'll show you how to do this in the video tomorrow, you might end up uh, getting basically almost no frames per second. But if your computer is pretty powerful, you might get something out of this. It is a really cool exercise though, because it will allow you to create any systems you want to create. But for me though, just from the scientific perspective, it was a sort of an exercise in both science, basically. I wanted to see if it was possible and if it would stay stable for many years. Specifically, this is why we use this um, in Universe Sandbox. But also, I wanted to actually create this and visualize this in Space Engine because I really wanted to see how it would look like in real life. And honestly, this looks just beautiful, gorgeous, and stunning. Now, I also wanted to maybe land on one of these planets just to see what it might look like in the night skies to actually observe so many objects around you. So let's actually choose one of the planets that might have Earth-like conditions on it. And I think I, right now I'm going to the one that has rings. So let's jump to it. Oh, look at that. This is gorgeous. And basically, go to the surface of this planet and then just kind of observe the night skies. So here we can actually see the sun very well, but I'm not seeing any of the additional planets just yet. So maybe maybe it's not actually that easy to see them in the night skies. I'm not entirely sure yet what we're about to see as we accelerate time, uh, but it's going to be a pretty cool exercise. So here we go. We're going to see what it might appear like in the skies as you are orbiting around a star with 416 other objects. Okay, we just saw them a second ago. So I think the atmosphere here actually does cover the uh, planets pretty uh, well. Here we go. I'm going to pause this for a second. But in the night skies, though, this is what you would observe. A ring of these absolutely gorgeous planets with possibly your neighbors or your cousins or maybe even your parents living on them. So if you were to stand uh, on Earth and look into the skies, this is what you would see. An absolutely incredible view of hundreds and hundreds of planets above you. Absolutely gorgeous. Well, that's kind of all I wanted to show you in this video. So do come back tomorrow if you want to know how I did this and if you want to recreate this yourself. It will involve a little bit of programming, but I'm going to give you all the codes and you're going to also learn something in the process that you can apply later in life. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.